And I want to I want to move past this next slide here and get to the ERG score and why they matter. The only way for college coaches to really figure out who is who has potential beyond looking at the top three boats that finish at the Junior National Championship, the only way for them to figure out who's any good is by looking at the numbers on the ERG, the ERG score. And if they were, and here is something that I would change if I could, if I had a magic wand, is I would seriously do small boat racing against the clock around the United States in the single skull and in the pair. So sculling and, and sweep rowing. And I would have head races in different parts of the nation and just use that as a way to recruit people because that shows you who can actually move a boat. But we're not there yet. So the only way for college coaches to figure out who's any good is they look at the list of the ERG, ERG scores. The um, 2000 meter values, 5K, 6K, and some look at maximum power output over 10 strokes or a minute. But the, the key is 2000 meters. So the main problem you're going to find is that a lot of the rowers do pretty well in their club in the boat and they win their seat races. So they are faster in the boat than some of their rowing comrades who are faster on the ergometer. And that, that becomes an issue because parents only know numbers if they don't know the um, nature of rowing where the concept of ergs don't float. Ergs don't float, meaning you can have a really good erg score, but if your technique of handling the oar in and out of the water is is bad, even with a really good erg score, you're going to have a crappy boat moving person. And that creates a rift between coaching and parents. Parents whose child has a good ERG score say, why is my child not in the boat? And then if the coach doesn't do a good job seat racing, then the seat racing results aren't clear enough to put the boat movers in the boat. And then they, they fall down to putting the bigger ERG scores into the boat. And then the boat doesn't win. And so what I do is I coach people on the ERG the way they have to row the boat because I was taught how to row the boat on the ERG. So how I use the ERG is how I row the boat. And I row the boat so that I can use the ERG so that the ERG helps me move the boat better. And that link between boat and the ERG doesn't exist. Very rarely do I see people erg the way they row a boat. There's a whole bunch of weird stuff that happens on the erg where the handle rises in the drive and dumps down at the finish and the elbows are pointing down to the ground. The wrists break at the finish. The, the lower back isn't supported. The knees aren't extended. The feet are at the wrong height and it's just amazing. When I get to see someone on the erg, it takes me literally an instant to say, oh, okay, oh my gosh, we make these l little changes. And in your steady state row, you're, you're about to have five or six seconds off your split. So you're faster by five or six seconds per 500 meters, just by simply remembering a couple of things and changing something around on how you set up on the erg. The erg is like an instrument to a musician. Every, every junior needs to have a rowing machine at home. And then how you use that rowing machine matters. The rower needs to be able to understand what 
they see of themselves in the mirror on the video, they need to be able to self-coach. So that is extremely important. They don't have to reinvent the wheel for that. People like me, professional coaches are available online in real time, but also in frame by frame analysis. I get footage from rowers and I explain what they need to see and how they can improve it with what type of technical drills. I do talk about what to drink during the workout, what to eat, and how to mentally prepare and visualization techniques. Um, let's move to the next slide. Nutrition, yeah, there it is, right? <laughs> so if I work with people, then, then we talk about food, right? At home, you have to realize that anything that's packaged has some sort of an ingredient in it that allows for longer shelf life. U.S. Rowing mentioned something about chocolate milk, which made me shake my head. And they they supported it with, with a nutritionist. And I'm thinking, oh my gosh, how is this possible that that that, that would be the go-to? I don't even know if they still have it on there, but it was a thing about 10 years ago. Fueling the rower's body, performance-focused by a diet. I'm just reading the points here. Importance of hydration. The mix of electrolytes and carbohydrates in the water during the workout is important, and I'm just going to say this out loud here. Look, the glycogen reserves in the liver last for roughly 40 minutes at an aerobic intensity. After that, the body is scavenging for, for quick uh, nutrients to create energy. So it's important that during the workout, the rower doesn't just drink water. There has to be some carbs in it and electrolytes because we sweat them out. So I think that's an important bit of information. Don't just drink water while you train longer than 40 minutes. Don't. Use your own water bottle. Do not share water bottles. Seems pretty logical. Uh, of the pandemic, but you know, thing, things get forgotten really quickly. Especially if you if 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 you didn't live through the pandemic like a young rower, or they lived through it, but they can't really remember it. Um, yes, encourage healthy recovery habits at home. What look? What you grab out of the refrigerator is going to have an effect on how fast you can recover, grow muscle, protein, legumes, beans, oh my goodness, lentils, pineapple. What seems to be obvious is easily forgotten at times, simply because day in and day out and homework and rushing Good actionable habits is something that sometimes need to be reminded. 